It's the Man Cave Club. Today we're going to talk about trucker jackets. Trucker jackets. It's a broad term, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe kind of the evolution of the trucker. And and uh, it's, I think it's easily my favorite type of jacket, favorite jacket style. Right. I much prefer it to the tour coats, just mm -hmm. style wise. Uh, yeah, I love trucker jackets. Well, the original truckers, uh, Obviously, Levi's comes to mind. Levi's, yeah. Type 1 was like 1905. Type 1. And then... Type 1 had like the single pocket, the cinch in the back, right? Yep, single pocket, yeah. This, uh, not to jump ahead, but this this one kind of, at least with the single pocket, has it, a, a nod to the Type 1. It echoes that. Yep. Yes. And then after Type 1 came the... And the Type 2. Well, not, I mean, if we're talking just Levi's, sure. If we're talking evolutionary of the trucker, the Lee Stormrider was next. And so which type, that is a nod to because right. it's got the rounded pocket, it's got the zigzag on the right. buttons. Right. And then after that came the uh, the Wrangler, 124 MJ, then Type 2, then Type 3 Levi's. Le oh, interesting. Levi's Type 3, 1967. Okay. Wow, you know your timeline, brother. Man. <laughs> I love that. It's amazing what what Google is. You came prepared. Stuff last night will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, uh, so so Levi's Type One, then Lee Storm Rider, Lee Storm Rider, and the Wrangler, which is still in production. Yeah, I love the Wrangler. Yeah, yeah, they sort of brought that back. They resurrected. Totally. It, yeah, right? I mean the Lee Storm Rider, you, you can get contemporary versions too. You can get contemporary versions of all these jackets. Right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But, but um, us Levi's, the, they pretty much just do the Type 3. Well, the, the the one thing that I'm not fond of the cinch in the back. I'm just not a fan of that. Everything else about yeah. the, the Type 1 and Type 2, I I like that cinch in the back. Just I've, me never, I've never worn one. I don't know. It looks like it would like I'd be feeling it right now, rubbing I, on the chair. I, I just don't <laughs> like the look of it. The, yeah. It's purely, for me, it's purely yeah. aesthetic. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't like the, the look of that cinch. Um, it's a little f on the feminine side, uh, a and little too retro, maybe for my taste. For instance, on the Type Two, mm -hmm. the pleating in the front, mm -hmm. right? Yep. That that was meant to expand the jacket, right? Sure. You cut those pleats out. Yep. And you were able to l put extra layers underneath during the winter time to, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really cool detail. I've, I haven't owned a Type Two, but it's probably my second favorite next to, right. You know, when I say Type 3, I'm not talking like in the staunch traditionalist sense, like a Levi's Type 3. I'm thinking like the modern interpretation, the modern version of a Levi's Type 3 jacket, right? And so yeah, I think like my second favorite would be the Levi's Type 2 because I love the way those, those the vertical pleats look along the buttons. It's such a cool look and, and it yeah. has dual pockets, which I think is nice. Um, and then after that, I really like the Wrangler, the angle of the pocket, the hand warmer pockets is really cool. Like, yeah, it's probably the most different right. of them all. Yeah, I was eyeing the the Wrangler also. Yeah, and uh, I had a, I had a Lee Stormrider ish uh, version from Brave Star a while back, and this the sizing just didn't work out, and I didn't have another one in my size, mm -hmm. which was kind of a bummer because it was a really cool jacket, and uh, and it's also pretty different too, having the more rounded pockets. It's right. like, it really sets it apart, it's really distinct. and Yeah, that's a unique feature for sure. But other than that, I mean, I think when you, when most people think trucker jacket, you think Levi's Type 3, which right. neither of us are wearing right now. But <laughs> this is maybe, the, you know, this is a modern interpretation. This is the Flint and Tinder, Huckberry's house brand. They're waxed trucker, it's blanket lined. Mm -hmm. It's like a wax canvas. And uh, I really love this jacket. This was um, like one of my first tr trucker jackets. My very first ever was a black Levi's Type 3 that I cut the sleeves off to make a vest. <laughs> Get your guns out. Dude, I have more like 
put some punk rock patches on and stuff, you oh, know? Oh, cool, yeah. In my, in my concert going days. My first was that, that Black Levi's and, and then this was really my, my next mm -hmm. trucker. After that, I think I, I think I just came across it, uh, you know, targeted advertising on the internet and went, wow, that's a nice looking jacket. It's, <laughs> it's blanket line. Yeah. You know, wax, most of the wax is gone now. Well, I think you chose well. Uh, you, yeah. you, know, you have good taste if that was the case. If you just came across it and thought to yourself, I like that jacket. I think I'm going to buy one of those. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like the, the length. It sits a little lower than yeah. like a vintage type three. I, I think most are modified, totally. right? Because totally. the original ones are real short right yeah. at the, you know, at the, up at the belt line. Yeah. People yeah. Don't, people, most people don't wear their pants that high anymore or tuck their shirts in. So right. it looks funny on me when I have something too short like that. Right. It comes in two versions. They also have a wool lined that they kind of go on and off of making. Okay. Not always. And it's definitely heavier duty for colder climates. Right. This is just like blanket. I mean, it feels like there might be some batting in between, but I think it's just straight blanket. Right. With the, the wax canvas. And uh, I need to re-wax it, I think. It's lost most of its um, water repelling uh function because right. most of the wax is gone it's super broken in and then you yeah. also what happens too is when the wax goes away you kind of lose that cool like patina effect you get from the wax canvas moving increasing mm. the color change mm -hmm. it's all just kind of flat you know yeah sahara tan color but this go this color i love this color on a jacket because it oh, goes, yeah. goes with so much for sure white shirt black shirt blue jeans like green pants yeah, whatever it goes really well with, with blue jeans i like the fact that it has the blanket lining i have a row territory supply jacket that i wish i would have ordered with the lining it doesn't give you much protection warmth protection yeah uh, without the lining just just the plain waxed yeah um uh, material fabric um uh, that's a cool jacket this is definitely like the uh the, the budget version of the supply jacket that's like the one of the top tier you know uh, what's the price point of that it's it's 298 bucks so 298 well the rogue territory i think that comes in maybe a little bit above that maybe a hundred dollars more maybe for the yeah. blind version yeah um, so it's not too far off. No, it's no, really not. When I, I think when I bought this, I mean, I, I think I bought this 2019. Mm -hmm. They were only like 240. They were, they right. were cheaper. The prices of everything up. was cheaper back then. Everything <laughs> was cheaper back then. Yeah. And if you go back another 10 years, it was even cheaper still. <laughs> totally. So yeah. It, I mean, you know, hey, things gotta, things gotta go up in price. So the world has changed. So it's, yeah, it goes up and up, never goes down. No, not usually. <laughs> So tell me about the one you're wearing, Paul. That's uh, cool. It looks like it's wool. Yeah, this is a tailor stitch. Mm -hmm. And this is, this jacket is old tailor stitch. Okay. When the majority of tailor stitches uh, products was actually made in San Francisco. Right. It's all hand sewn, patterned and sewn in San Francisco. It's a, it's a wool trucker. It's called their long haul jacket it seemed as if taylor stitch their sizing shifted a little bit when they started manufacturing overseas um i feel like their their sizing got a little bigger it opened up a little bit okay because of if because i've tried their long haul jacket on in a 38 and it's it doesn't fit me as well as this jacket That's that one hmm. yeah but i just love this jacket this is a great travel jacket you know travel to Ireland and Europe with this in the fall. This is perfect. You just layer with this. It's so warm because mm -hmm. of the wool. And even if it, you know, it rains like a light rain. Wool is it, great it'll, water repellent. Yeah, it'll yeah. repel the rain. That's why there's so many sheep yeah. in Scotland. <laughs> right? They just they get caught in the rain. There's there's they're more good. sheep than people. Dude, they they're, say they're dry sheep, man. Right. Naturally repellent. I love the hand warmers on it. I love the. Yeah. The copper buttons. Oh yeah, yeah. They uh, they dial this one in for sure. Yeah, that's I mean. a gorgeous jacket. That's like, yeah. I mean, I mean, you could wear that thing to a wedding. That's like that's like borderline <laughs> like a, like a dress piece, you know. But it's yeah. also like still so casual because it's it's a trucker pattern. Yeah, I love the name I mean, too. Hey, Jimmy, I think you're pushing it a <laughs> yeah, little bit. Yeah, well, I don't consider this a dress piece. The but, type of the yeah. type of weddings I get invited to. You yeah, farm wedding. Right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Farmland weddings. Yeah. We call them. 
Yeah, I just I feel like this is one of my special jackets because of the, uh, the serendipity of acquiring it at the time. Yeah, that's so cool. I that's a that's a good point you bring up. All is how you know our emotional connections mm -hmm. to a certain piece will will change how we favor that piece, and right. it might not be the best at any one thing in our collections. Yeah, but that's really you know what gets us connected in the first place with this clothing is like some sort of emotional connection sure not to get too heady but i think that's cool you bring that's a good point and yeah and uh, not maybe not everyone's made that connection and maybe hearing me say that they'll be like oh that's why i love that jacket so much you know right so my first day with my wife on that jacket right. type thing you know so yeah that's a cool piece man i love it yeah type three type three levi's man uh 1967s when it came out i think it's heavily worn through the set i mean so many mm -hmm. so many iconic uh roles in pop culture you can you can imagine you know actors and celebrities and stuff wearing just a beat up denim trucker jacket well being a child of the 70s myself i can say that it was pretty ubiquitous the, the Levi's denim jacket. I mean, there were basically three, right? You had the Levi's, Lee, of course, mm -hmm. that brand, Wrangler. Mm -hmm. uh, on Levi's, I think, was on top of the mountain. I think so. I think design-wise, it's the, yeah. it's and, the coolest. Yeah, and being readily accessible. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, and I mean, I, back then, was it just JC Penney, Sears? Yeah. Department stores mostly. Sold them. This before big box stores. Yeah. Totally. Uh, and before Levi's actually had their own stores and malls. Right. Uh, if you wanted a pair of Levi's, you you know, you would go to a department store, you yeah. go to JC Penney's or Sears. Yeah. Uh, I think eventually JC Penney's and Sears they had they had their own brands. Um but anyways, we're digressing a little bit. There. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think it's you know it's funny like we're we're nerds at, at this stuff, so we're mm -hmm. we're calling them you know type three, type two, type one. But right. it was just a denim jacket. Yeah, that like, people weren't going around. Oh, I got the new type three Levi's. Yeah. It was just like it was just a denim jacket, yeah. right? Like yeah, it's interesting. That's interesting. That's interesting points before the the, the aura and the history yeah. of denim really came into more like mainstream understanding for people. Yeah, it wasn't appreciated. It was just, it was just a denim jacket, right? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. You know, this, my jacket that I'm wearing right here is a pretty faithful, aside from maybe the hand warmer pockets, um, pretty faithful version of a Levi's Type 3. This is a pure blue Japan, mm. uh, made specifically for Rivet and Hyde. Nice. Um, it's their slubby, X denim, the uh, same stuff that my pants are made out of. We we de detail those pants in the the denim episode we did, um, and they they River and High modifies Pure Blue Japan's pattern a little bit. They make mm -hmm. it a little longer, so I really love how this thing fits because I, I definitely favor a little bit longer t-shirt untucked, and I right. don't get, I don't get the weird t-shirt tail in this jacket. Right. Um, like I did maybe with that Brave Star one. And this, I bought this because of that Brave Star jacket because I was like, oh, stoked. I'm going to get a sweet, like, denim, you know, raw denim trucker jacket because mm -hmm. I really like that Huckberry one, but I wanted a denim version. Mm -hmm. I bought that Brave Star and it didn't work. They had nothing else in stock. It was kind of a tough time. It was like maybe the end, maybe it was, it was like 2020, somewhere in there. So a lot yeah. of stuff was out of stock and they're like, Oh wow! You know, Lord knows when we're gonna restock anything right. or survive, and I just happened to see Rivet and Hyde on Instagram. I saw this jacket, and I mm -hmm. was like, I was like, full send. I'm going like <laughs> just straight you to go, the top, going in deep, yeah. Pure Blue Japan, yeah. and like, man, I I don't, I don't regret this thing at all. It's right. like it's so comfortable. Yeah, PBJ, it, they just do beautiful, beautiful stuff. You know. Um, uh, the construction of that jacket is is really dialed in, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. um, you can see how the arms taper down nicely. Yeah. The fit on it is just it's just classic and beautiful. 
Totally. I love the multicolor stitching they do. The same, the thing, same thing on their stitching. pants. You got oh, the... oh, I see. Yes. Uh, you have, so you have more of a yellow stitching for the pocket flap and the, uh, the down the front of the button seam. Yep. And then you have a d darker orange in the side pleats. Yep. And across the top. Yeah, the, kind of that, that, the more, yolk. that more classic, like a uh, golden Levi's stitch color on that dark. Yeah, dark that's indigo. interesting. Like, but it it's interesting so they use two two different colors. Yeah, they do that stitching. on their pants too. At least the pants I have. My, the pants I have wow. are three actually. There's an even thicker, yeah. slightly off gold color too. And so it's just one of those one of those details they do that I appreciate. I yeah. really really like how they do stuff. Very cool. And you know, not quite as not quite as like of a monster or titan in the industry as Ironheart is, mm -hmm. but I just for whatever reason that's I've fallen into into liking their stuff. Um, right. And but the type three in general, man, like the the long V patterns down the front. I mean, that is really I think the biggest like mm -hmm. uh, identifying factor right. of a type three jacket. That's a typical earmark of yep. that style jacket. Totally. Yeah. And the and the the pocket lapel the, or the pocket flaps uh, having that point. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, buttons and it's uh, right. it's a, it's a great design. I love it. I love the hand warmers. You know. Right. That's that's one of my uh, mo modified. Yep. Uh, the the uh, considered a modified with the pockets, right? That came in what around in the '80s sometime. Totally, and they introduced the pockets, and, and I'm fine with it. I don't I don't want to if pocket yeah. if po if hand warmer pockets make me not a traditionalist, then I don't want to be one. <laughs> so I'm a fan. I know it just is. So talk to me about this, man. I see I yeah. see a red label. Must yeah. mean this is a this is a <laughs> Levi's leather type three trucker. I bought this used in the secondary market um, and uh, as they call it and um, something inter interesting about the Levi's leather type 3 trucker jackets this is an old this is the the first version they did okay and how you can tell is this jacket has buttons like a traditional denim Truck. trucker jacket okay the new versions have snaps. They got snaps, okay. Yeah. So they still make this. They still make this jacket. Okay, you can go on the Levi's website and buy this leather got trucker it. jacket, but but it's got snaps. It has snaps. I think this is like like the first sure. version that they did. And it's a little more unique and they're a little harder to find. Yeah. I like the fact that it has buttons like a traditional Levi's trucker jacket. Um, totally. I'm sure it may be just a purely manufacturing thing. Why they swap that over or well, it's, longevity. It's, to install snaps on a jacket, it's it's a lot cheaper. It's way quicker. You know, the machine does it. Just pop, 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 pop. Exactly. Right, yeah. And this is like, you know, you have to sew the buttonholes. Yep. You know, <clears throat> the, the, the buttons have to be um, uh, pressed. Yeah. Pressed in. Yeah, that's a sweet jacket, man. I like the almost like the tumbled look that the leather has, just from being creased and moved and and moved right. around so much, and uh, it looks it looks cozy. Yeah, I bought it used. I've had this jacket for I want to say at least maybe six or seven years, um, but I bought it used. It was already slightly broken in, and then you know I've worn it for the last five six years. It's it's one of my favorite jackets. It's just um, and the fact that I, I got it used and I got it, got it for a really good price. Yeah, so totally. That, that always helps. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Uh, it's a, uh, I mean, you are, I, I kind of think of you and leather jackets, like in the same like sentence in my head, you know, yeah. I'm like Paul's, I love leather, Paul's a leather jacket guy. We, we know that from our, <laughs> our leather jacket episode. Right. Right. And so that one's cool, man. Cause it's really like a melding of. Of, of styles, you know, yeah. the classic trucker, but in, in the material that you don't always see. And uh, it's cool, man. I love how just in general, trucker jackets are kind of a blank canvas for, you know, it can be as simple as just traditional denim. Yeah. And then it just kind of goes from there. And, and we, li we cool live, stuff. we really live in amazing times oh, because there's nice. so many choices for every category. Trucker jackets, no exception. I mean, there's <laughs> too many choices. There's too opinion. many options. Yeah. Too many. Yeah. It can be confusing sometimes. That's yeah. why, you know, we're trying to make this episode 
for people out there yeah in the the meta universe yeah and maybe give them some idea of what they you know try to narrow it down to make choices about you know what type of truck jacket they want to buy totally yeah style wise i mean that I, you know we don't we don't have a, the, a lot of those styles we first outlined on us right now mm -hmm. type one type two uh or the wrangler necessarily but i mean you can find that stuff on ebay some cool brands that do type one and type two you know some pretty high-end stuff right um but well, you, you could find a vintage wrangler jacket i was looking on ebay like a sweet right beat up broken in one right for like 60 80 bucks man yeah and like it's a, that's a killer jacket that's gonna last you still there's a little word of caution there because uh buying old vintage stuff it it seems pretty rad on the surface but it does come with its problems and foibles sure um, sizing is one sizing uh tears yeah broken buttons and snaps that yep. you have to have repaired yep um i've kind of gone down that road so i uh I, not... I i prefer to do it in person like at yeah. local thrift shops if i can't sure. if i can't inspect something absolutely in person and it's yeah, yeah I've, I've i've been let down way too many times <laughs> yeah not to mention weird smells uh, weird smells man <laughs> and some smells don't come out in the wash man i don't know uh, yeah i've saying. had that experience <laughs> you wash that thing several times and uh it just yeah you know, curry but, is one but of they're the out there yeah <laughs> you can't oh, wash out no. <laughs> well if you're very adventurous maybe <laughs> online shopping for second hand is for you right, right. otherwise yeah try to do it in person but what i'm trying to say i guess my point is you don't have to spend a bajillion dollars to get right. a sweet piece a sweet of course i mean this just, was yeah. you know under two hundred dollars, yeah, and maybe yeah. I I snagged this for like, you know, I think it was like a hundred and forty bucks or hundred something like that. I mean, can't beat that. Yeah, and I actually bought this. I contacted the guy in person, and we, you know, we met, and I bought this phone. We got some new jackets on. I'm wearing the Wise Made Archer jacket, and uh, you got a Capital. Uh, this is a, a capital brand, a very unique Japanese brand. Mm -hmm. they, for the most part, they do more like Japanese streetwear, but they have a very small category where they do uh, a couple of trucker jackets and jeans cool. out of this beautiful sashiko fabric. Uh, the, the base denim that this jacket is made from is dyed with persimmons. Oh, interesting. That's where that kind of color. Yeah. So comes from. the fades are very interesting with mm. this jacket. Um, this is based on a, a Lee Riders jacket. Yep. Right? The pattern. Yep. Yeah. Sim similar to that that Taylor Stitch you had on earlier, but this one lengthwise seems a little more traditional, like a little shorter in the body. Definitely. This is very close to the. the original vintage traditional lee riders jacket it's shorter no hand warmer pockets yeah like the original yeah. levi's type 3 didn't have hand right. warmer pockets um but uh, big mistake in my opinion <laughs> <laughs> right that's a cool jacket i love I i've always yeah. really admired uh sashiko pieces like from afar i've never this was the first piece i've ever seen in person actually mm -hmm. in that fabric and it's kind of it's it's really hard to actually find information i remember when i first came across it looking it up because i was i was familiar with the term sashiko as it pertains to like denim repair right because that's the name for like a style of repairing denim yeah and so when you anytime you search like sashiko fabric or denim like that's what comes up is, right is like repairing denim right so i had a really hard time uh i even asked someone was like a um a textiles uh professor at sonoma state and i had no idea what i was talking about and i was like i was like i don't know it's, it exists I, i've seen mm -hmm. it you know uh so it's cool man it's it's not as like pliable or like soft as I expected it to be. It looks like it would, 
Like it looks like a, almost like a waffle Henley. Mm -hmm. Like in my head, looking at photos, I expect it to just be like a blanket. But it's more, it's more like denim. It's right. like stiffer, takes more breaking in. Not that it doesn't look comfortable, you know, but it's, yeah. it's just, it's, it's stiffer than I expected it to be, right? Right, this particular uh, fabric is, it's, has some stiffness to it. Um, yeah, I was on their website. Again, you know, I was trying to glean some information off their website. Um, they do recommend like a warm water soak to loosen up oh, and cool. the fabric a little bit to yeah. take the stiffness and sheen out of it. Um, I don't know. I mean, uh, there's something about it, this jacket that appeals to me. I tried it on in Standard and Strange and I thought the fit was really nice on me. It's a very slim, streamlined fit. And I was like, yeah. I, I, I could do that jacket. It's so different. I'm considering like adding something to my my stable, my my collection. Um, I use that term loosely because it's just like my wardrobe, right? But mm -hmm. but uh, I'm always like weighing like, what is this crossing over? Do I have a jacket in this color already? Mm -hmm. Do I have something in this fabric and close to this color? Like how, because if it's not different enough, Right. If I don't, if I don't like it more than the thing it's close to, yeah. I'm not gonna wear it. I'm gonna wear the one I like more. Of course, yeah. It went, it was, so, but that thing, like, what what could that thing ever cross over in your collection, right? Just the color in that, though. It's like but, the but, the fabric is is so different. Yeah, know? I tend to be drawn to or gravitate towards things that are a little bit unusual, yeah. but still traditional in the the base design yeah. of the piece yeah which is i think this you know meets, oh, that, meets those requirements it exemplifies that perfectly so wise made wise made we're gonna yeah. revisit this jacket again revisit it a little bit um yeah we did we obviously detailed it pretty pretty heavily in the wise made video but i could we, tell it is one me. of your favorite pieces man it's my current like yeah. favorite it's my current go-to um yeah Nick at Wiseman, I think he, he really dialed that in. Uh, the pattern on that is spot on. It is. It's got it's got you know kind of cool details and and nods to some of my favorite things. Right, it's got the pocket flaps of a Levi's Type Three. Mm -hmm. I think overall silhouette is kind of like the modified modern Levi's Type Three hand warmers and the in the cut. Right. It's got the cool zigzag like a Lee Stormrider does. Yeah. Um, and then it's got the addition of those shoulder gussets. So mm -hmm. it's like, for me, it's like everything I want out of a modern trucker jacket. Sure. Um, yeah, it's interesting. It's, uh, at its core, it's a traditional Levi's trucker. It starts there, but then Nick from Wisemate, he builds on that concept in adds these extra options you have the shoulder gussets you have the elbow, the elbow reinfor reinforcements the tab on the collar yeah um it's and, very well thought out totally and, and i like that it's like uh it's still super understated you know it's he's not choosing crazy colors or crazy fabrics it's just a, a durable cotton fabric mm -hmm and but it's like it's understated yeah for me the appreciation for this archer jacket from wise made really comes in wearing it and mm -hmm. like just the day to day how it wears how how you can you know function and just drive so nicely right. with those shoulder gussets and and that's that's when i really reach for a piece sure. is like is when i know like i can just like mindlessly wear this thing throughout the day it's not going to get in my way right anything i'm doing hmm. i can just i can just wear it and it's i think that adds to the the subconscious of like when i'm just, uh, just snatching it out of my closet putting it on for the day right you know, so. the comfort and ease of choosing it and wearing it yeah i tend to do that with 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 shoes with the the same shoes or the same you know pairs of pants that i favor really been favoring this piece um i've been wearing it a ton and and uh, it's a color that i didn't really have represented with jackets mm -hmm. i'm finding works really well you know with, with his jeans too go figure right. <laughs> it's a good color yeah yeah earth tone yeah a couple of different jackets on here um this is the the mr freedom cowboy jacket they call it cool and um 
Mr. Freedom does two trucker jackets. They do the rancher blouse. It's called the rancher blouse because that's what denim jackets used to be called, right? Blouse. Sure. And then this is the they call it the cowboy jacket. The Mr. Freedom rancher jacket is similar to this, but it has the cinch in the back. Okay. But I, I do love this cowboy denim jacket. Um, this is more like a sateen cotton denim. It's cool fabric, yeah. I mean, un, undyed, yeah. kind of just that natural, like, ecru cotton color. It, they always wear in so well. And Mr. Freedom, uh, it's, it's a very unique pattern, style. You know, the shape of the pockets and the stitching. It has the basic matrix of the, the type three v's the original type three v's yeah. but then you could see he modified the upper pockets yeah and the yoke is like kind of more like a western style yeah. yoke yeah, right? western yoke and it has the the m stitch in the pocket for mr freedom yeah so it's cool i like the angle of the pockets and then kind of the asymmetry of the pocket flap too how it's like longer on one side and right mr. Yeah. mr freedom's like I know, kind of a little bit out there sometimes in their stuff, and and uh, Chris is an eccentric dude, and mm -hmm. comes through in his designs like in a really like cool way. Like that's like, I mean, you could hop in a time machine and go back, and I don't think anyone would look sideways at you wearing that jacket. Like it's, it looks vintage. Right. Um, yeah, and I had this jacket in uh, the cotton natural denim mm -hmm. that i bought used and i wasn't sure about the size the fit mm -hmm. and and it it was a little bit big on me it always sort of bugged me a little bit that the, the jacket was was too big on me yeah so i sold that one off and then i think that's the one i tried on right yeah, i tried that one on because that was the first like mr freedom piece and it it did it fit well for me. It was more like I just I'm not confident wearing that light of a color. Right. It's just that. Nah, I'm not there yet. I'm, well, it's a I'm good spring spring summer jacket. Totally. Um, but it was a cool color. jacket. I remember that that thing fitting. So you sold yeah. that. Well, That's I sold cool. I sold that, and I was down in Los Angeles last year, and uh, popped into the Mr. Freedom store, and actually bought the proper size for me. This is like a, a 38. I think the other jacket was a 40. Got it. Um, this is one of my favorite trucker jackets. That's, I mean, that's why I made the point of buying it again. Yeah. In, in the proper size, because I, I, you know, like I like it that much. It's it's unique. It's different. Totally. Um, the, it's got the the Western flair, but the but also like it's a classic trucker. Still, you really recognize it. Still, it's like that classic trucker look. This one's pretty unique, Paul, because this is uh, like that Levi's jacket you had on earlier. It's leather. Mm -hmm. But this is a, it's a rough out. It's like a split suede. Um, split steer. Split steer uh, suede jacket. And this is uh, made by the goats. Ironheart. Ironheart. Uh, well, made by, well, it's an Ironheart brand, right. but it's not made by Ironheart. Right, that's a beautiful jacket, man. And that you look really sexy with that jacket, dude. Actually. Thank you, man. <laughs> it's a, uh, it's so warm, and uh, I really love the lining. I mean, it, this thing is thick. Like, it, I yeah. feel like I feel like I have a cow on, like on me right now. It is, you know, it's <laughs> it's interesting. It's a heavy jacket. That's the heavy version. And just last year, they did this jacket in a lighter weight sheepskin leather. Okay. You know, maybe that that was the case that you know these not the everyone full, wanted the heavy the heavy weight the full steer yeah it, it's basically a full grain leather that's just turned turned in yeah. yeah well I tell you right now this brisk morning I'm appreciating the heavy version of this jacket <laughs> really it's it's beautiful and, and yeah and it's uh I mean, hopefully it's coming across uh, you know on camera but it's just a classic Levi's Type Three. Mm -hmm. Type three pattern. Uh, got my hand warmers. I always appreciate a good inside pocket too. Um, I feel I tend to utilize those inside pockets like, of course, quite a bit, man. They're, yeah, they're, slip your wallet in there, your phone, or yeah, they're um, they're heavy duty. Um, and uh, I can't I can't say I don't know enough enough good things just about how like the comfort of this jacket too. Yeah, it's pretty cool. The sleeve length is is great and um Ironheart, I mean they like design-wise they're they're there's a reason they're at the top, you know? Mm -hmm. And and it's like 
you put their pieces on and you're just like, yeah, this, this is it. <laughs> Everything they do is very meticulously planned, thought out, designed, patterned, yep. manufactured. And, you know, in Ironheart, it's like you, you find a formula that works, you find a, a design language and aesthetic that works, mm -hmm. and you just make it as good as you can. And right. we're talking about Ironheart, not, not, maybe not Levi's right. for, to that point goes now anymore, right? But, right. but uh, yeah, I mean, there's Well, reason. Ironheart, they do their fair share of experimenting, but they know enough to stay in their lane. They don't deviate too much. Yeah. And after all, it's, it's a business. Yeah. They want to manufacture nice clothes, well-designed clothes, well-made clothes, and they want to sell these pieces yeah right they don't want to just manufacture them and have them sit on the shelf and yep. uh nobody buys them yep um but they they have it dialed in this this past season for iron hearts just been a banger yeah it's been yeah fantastic the totally ultra heavyweight flannels winter jack fall and winter jackets um they have a beautiful trucker that they just released today i think it's like a a ripcord tan, and then they do like an army green trucker jacket in the ripcord fabric. Uh, too cool. It's so beautiful. It almost looks like a corduroy, but it's not. It's oh, more nice. like a military ripcord fabric. I'm such a stand for anything like green ripcord material. Uh, you have to so, get one of these jackets. Uh, uh, man, no, it's the holiday season. I can't. <laughs> hey, buy, buy, have uh, Sarah buy it for you for Christmas. <laughs> uh, she knows. Every, every time she asks me, what do you want for Christmas? I'm like, uh, she, she knows my answer is going to be something. Oh, you're in a hurt. <laughs> yeah, something not cheap. The last two Christmases, it's been all ultra heavy late, ultra UHF flannels from, oh, well, from Ironheart. Well, that's that's to, kind of our tradition is she gets me a, a new UHF every year. Time to drop one of those trucker jackets. Yeah, that's yeah. well, the thing, though. That's the only thing I get for Christmas if that's what I ask for. <laughs> well, that's okay. okay. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe have some small stocking stuff. There's like, yeah. you know, cheap stuff Ugh. for you. Your deck of cards, a cigarette <laughs> yeah. lighter. Yeah. You know, that cheaps the Bic lighter, cheap stuff. Oh, man. Well, yeah. Ironheart. Mr. Freedom. Two, two cool, unique pieces. Yes. I think it's a good, a good note to end this episode on before we right. get too long. But, man, it's been fun talking about, I think, in my opinion, the best style jacket out there, the trucker. And mm -hmm. uh, I know you're a fan. You you have a few. Yeah, um, we had fun. This is this has been a fun episode. Um, of course, when it comes to the trucker jacket, there's much more landscape to cover. Um, and we could wax on for uh, another three hours about yep. trucker jackets. But we try to keep the episodes a little bit concise yep. and run through some different products for you guys, just so you can get an idea, a feel before you make a purchase, totally. if you're on the fence about something, maybe this helps you go either way. Um, yeah, yeah. If, you, if you guys, if you have any questions about the specific stuff we wore today or, or you know, stuff you're thinking about getting, I know for me personally, I'm gonna start looking for maybe a type two. I don't know, I just mm -hmm. I want that like Elvis uh, jailhouse rock vibe going right. on it's that's i really like that type too but i just uh, mm -hmm. i haven't found haven't found the one yet so we'll mm. see maybe maybe iron heart makes a really nice type i was too. gonna say maybe it'll be <laughs> iron hearts <laughs> i'm sure i'll get some dms from you uh oh later now this, that i know later, what later you're this evening. <laughs> oh now that i know what you're looking for yes you, you definitely get some dms i'm not working tonight but maybe perfect. tomorrow night yeah perfect well, right on, Paul. Uh, yeah, it's been great, man. Thanks again, guys, for joining us here in the Man Cave Club. It's Jimmy and Paul talking about it all. See you next time. It's the Man Cave Club.